So thoughts are powerful. So this morning we're going to uh, deal with the thoughts that hold you back. Because who knows that there's some thoughts that you've had in your life that hold you back. And who knows that there's some thoughts you've had in your life that have set you free. Yeah. Alright, so this morning we're dealing with the ones that hold you back. This evening we're going to be dealing with the ones that set you free. Now I need to let you know about the ones that hold you back first, so that you can be set what? Free. Would that be good? Yes. Fantastic. Awesome. So we've got lots of Bible to get through this morning. Because who, who knows there's some good thoughts in here? There's some weird gear here as well. I, mean, I don't know if you've read this thing from back to front. There, there is some weird gear in here. But there's some real good stuff in here, which if you use it, you can live your life by. I, I call it the mind's filter. What is it? Now, in order for it to be a good filter, what are you going to do with it? Read it. Read it. That'd be a good thing. So your job is to wear these things out as quickly as possible. <coughs> Did you know that? You, you, you don't want one that looks good all the time. So it means it's not getting <coughs> used. Alright, so I, I've got this here just as symbolism because I've actually printed out my verses so I don't have to thumb through. The, the modern technology, isn't it fantastic? So the first thing we're going to look at is just because you think it doesn't mean it's right. See, how many of you have had a thought? <laughs> and you thought it was right, and so then you verbalised that it could be to your spouse or someone else about how right you are about something. <laughs> Only to find out, possibly half an hour later, or an hour later, or a day later, that you are oh so wrong. Doesn't that suck? Yeah. And it all happened because you didn't think enough about what you are about to say. It's called foot in mouth what? Disease. I don't know why it's called foot in mouth, but it's really uh, bad thinking. So let's have a look at some of this stuff. Let's have a look at what God thinks about what we think. Psalm 94, 10 to 11. Won't the one who corrects nations punish you? Doesn't the teacher of people know everything? The Lord knows what people think. He knows their thoughts are just a puff of wind. This is what our Creator thinks about our thoughts. Just a puff of wind. Now what does that mean? Well, it means they're not worth that much. Right? There's a reality check. They're just a puff of wind. Right? He didn't say, hey, their thoughts are sometimes really, really clever. Did he? He didn't say, sometimes their thoughts are really, really dumb. He said, their thoughts are like a puff of wind. What that really means is that he knows that most of the time we really don't think things through. Is that, is that fair? Because if we did, we usually wouldn't find ourselves in the situations that we often do. Yes or yes? Yes. But there you go. Good answer. Alright, so Proverbs. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, making people happy and healthy. Now where do words come from? Your thoughts. And so you can think pleasant thoughts and be happy. Or you can think sad thoughts and be... Mm. Some people think they are doing right, but in the end it leads to where? Death. See, because often we'll be doing something that we think is fine, because we haven't thought it through, only to find that we've gone down the wrong road. And there's a good saying about this. Even if you find yourself a thousand miles down the wrong road, you can still turn back. And see, that this is the awesome thing that God has, has let us do, right? Is to actually repair our stupidity. How often? As often as it happens. This is the cool thing. But see, some of us, when we do something real, real stupid, we think that we're stuck with that stupid thing, and therefore we stay where? In the stupidity. But we don't have to. Because all of us are making stupid decisions all the time based on our stupid thoughts. But it doesn't mean we have to stay there because as quickly as we thought something stupid, we can think something good to fix it. Because it, it, here's, here's a powerful thing. I learned this many, many years ago. People are more alike than they are different. Let me say that again. People are more alike than they are different. And so, you know, we're all going to make stupid choices from time to time because we think silly things. We're all going to make bad mistakes. 
But see, if we actually understand that we're all more alike than we are different, then we'd be a little bit more gracious towards each other when we screw up. Is that fair? But see, most of the time, we're judging people by our intention. Like we intend to do good, but they stuffed up, so they're bad. Right? And we need to stop that. There's another verse that will come up later, you know. Let us not think any more highly of ourselves than we on the board. You know, we are just so quick to judge other people when really we shouldn't because just because they did something dumb, what, you, you can't tell me that in the next 24 hours you're not going to do something dumb? It's human. It will happen. It's a promise. Just have a look. The only way it's not going to happen is if you fall asleep for 24 hours. Right? Then you might have something else. <laughs> See, God has a sense of humor. He has a sense of humor because he made us knowing what we'd do just to see what we'd do. <laughs> do you reckon he laughs up there a whole lot? Yeah. Just has a good old chuckle to himself. I think he created that acronym, LOL. Luke 12. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. There I'll store all my grain and other goods. Then I can say to myself, I have enough good things stored up the last few years. Rest, eat, drink and enjoy life. But God said to him, foolish man, tonight your life will be taken from you. So who will get those things you prepared for yourself? So there's a man who's done well in life. And starts thinking to himself, why don't I just enjoy the fruits of my labor? Why don't I just ignore everybody else? I'm, I'm telling you right now, that man was having stupid thoughts. Selfish thoughts. Thoughts that didn't involve anyone but himself. And because of that, God said, well, let me just teach you one little lesson. Because with the little lesson God was about to teach him, he wouldn't need any more. <laughs> Romans 12.3 Because God has given me a special gift, I have something to say to everyone among you. Do not think you are better than you are. You must decide what you really are by the amount of faith God has given you. And this comes back to my point before. You know, We're so quick to think thoughts about other people when we should really just park those thoughts immediately in the garage. Because, like I said, just because they're doing something dumb today doesn't mean we're excluded from it. You know? And, and the point being that just because we think silly things and then end up doing silly things doesn't mean that we're any less of a person. It just means that we just screwed up just then. And we can fix it up, provided we've got enough grace going around from other people. Yes, yes. 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 yes, yes. Excellent. So here, here's the deal. We need to be slower to think. We need to be slower to act. <coughs> Failure to do so will hold us back. Sometimes it will lead to death. Check this stuff out in Deuteronomy. Make sure no man or woman, family, group, or tribe among you leaves the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of those nations. They would be like a plant that grows bitter, poisonous fruit. These are the kind of people who hear these curses but bless themselves thinking we will be safe even though we continue to do what we do. Those people may destroy all your land, both in wet and dry. The Lord will not forgive them, and his anger will be like a burning fire against those people, and all the curses written in this book will come on them. The Lord will destroy any memory of them on the earth. Now what does that mean? What it means is if you have this naive thought that you can go off and do your own thing without God, it's going to come back and bite you. Now, I don't know if you're like me, do you often have doubts about God? And if not often, sometimes. And see, sometimes in those moments of doubt, could you think, you know, what's this all about? To heck with it, I'll go do my own thing. It's fair enough that you have those thoughts. It's not that you have the thoughts, it's what you do with the thoughts. See, your mind is like a radio station, and it's like this bandwidth just going on, you know, just messages, bang, 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 bang. In fact, 
you're probably not even in tune with all the thoughts that you're actually having at any given moment in time. You'd probably be frightened with some of the thoughts you actually really do have. See, the, 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 the thing is that if we slow down our thinking and think things through rationally, logically, instead of emotionally, what might happen? Will we make better choices or poorer choices? Be better. Better choices. 